Football is a contact sport. Players sacrificing mind and body for their team. You wouldn't know it by looking at him, but heading into what should be his junior season, David Raffin has taken more hits than even the most veteran player without ever playing a snap at Schumann Stadium. Uh, Dave's a great guy. I mean, he's, he's goofy and he's funny. He always lifts everybody's spirits up when we need it, and uh, he's always there for any of us whenever we need him. You know, he's the type of guy who's really positive, comes into to our, to our meeting room every single day with, with a smile and, and uh, takes a lot off my plate, you know, and, and, uh, and, and just a hard worker, great kid. You know, I, I think what Dave can honestly say to himself is everything that he's been through and that, has, you know, with his family and then here is that he can help anybody through any situation. I was asked this question, you know, is it worth it a couple times? Uh, whether it's my family members, other friends around campus, you know, is it worth the blood, sweat, and tears? Getting ready to make the jump to college football as a preferred walk-on, Raffin was hit hard before he even strapped on pads as a Ball State Cardinal, blindsided returning home from a family vacation. We had just pulled into the driveway and the cops were pretty much there to meet us. And, uh, you know, I'll never forget that moment walking in um, into the house and having the cops talk to us and tell us, and like, you know, we're sorry to inform you, but your son Raymond has passed away earlier this afternoon. Overdosed on heroin. Unfortunately, in our town, that's, that's a huge problem. When you lose something like that, when you lose a brother or family member, it, it doesn't hit you right away. It's a real shock. So that actually took a couple months. I was about four weeks into the season here when it really hit me. And I kind of just kind of had a mental breakdown then because, you know, I finally realized, you know, I'm going to be going home for Thanksgiving and he won't be walking through the front door. I, I mean, I didn't want to ask and pry too much because I wanted him to talk to me about it whenever he needed to talk about it. And, and we did come to that point and we talked, but for the most part, I just, I just wanted to be there for him. I wanted to let him know he had a good friend and uh, that I would want him to be that good friend. When it came to football, um, helping me overcome what had happened with my brother, you know, no matter what happened, the, fo the football field was still there. My pads were still there, and they were just sitting there waiting for me, you know, at the end of the day. And I think that was one of the biggest things, to know that every time I showed up at the facility and on the field, that I had something to go to when I needed help. Raffin would pass on the lessons of his brother's story by speaking to local schools about the dangers of drug abuse and is currently working on a book chronicling his journey titled Through Hell and Back Again. When you realize that you're making that impact, that your message is getting across these people, I mean, it doesn't make that situation any better, but it really does kind of add that closure to it and say, you know what, I may not be able to change what happened in the past, but I can sure make a difference with what's gonna happen in the future with these people. With the excitement of his sophomore season on the horizon, Raffin was feeling confident it would be his year. I was ready, you know, I was ready to go in. I came in that day, there was, there was something about that day I felt like, you know what, we have our first scrimmage tonight, I, I've got a feeling this is gonna be a good one. This is where I'm gonna make my mark. I go in for last couple plays and get hit to the side by a guy getting tackled and the rest is history there. A spiral fracture uh, had broken completely through on my fibula. Um, I had torn a bunch of ligaments in my ankle and that you know called for immediate surgery. Almost a month after the surgery, we started having an infection that lasted four months. Three months out, a screw broke in the leg. And about seven months out of the surgery, uh, come to find out I have a very, you know, very serious um, tarsal tunnel problem. Uh, we just try to strengthen it as much as possible and, and, and just try to get him back. I mean, you know, it, it didn't go as smoothly as you like, but you know, you, you had to give the time and the effort and, and you, you had to give that guy a chance. How do you not give a guy like Dave Raffin a chance? Probably after the first game uh, against Eastern Michigan, I, I could barely stand uh, for the whole game. I don't know if I can keep doing this. You know, it's too painful. I, I can't walk at the end of the day. Um, I've, got, I've got to start making some changes here. Having lost the dream of playing in a game, Raffin didn't want to lose the sport, which had become a crucial part of his life. I told him immediately that I wish I could have him around every minute of the day. We will find a spot for you. That's the first thing I said to him, because if we lose David Raffin out of this program, shame on us. 
It is kind of weird that we give him a hard time and call him Coach Raffin just because he doesn't really like it because he still thinks of himself as one of us. But um, we like to give him that hard time and uh, he, he definitely helps a lot. He can, it's, it's cool to see a player out there that's been part of it and has actually played that can kind of help um, give that perspective on things when we need it. He's a part of this position. You know, he's been a part of this position since he's been here. That's a special feeling when you're in that room, when you're an offensive lineman. And, and he didn't want to lose that feeling. It was really important to him that he, that he continue being one of the guys. I thought to myself, you know, is it worth it? And then I think of all the friends that I have, the players, the teammates, all the relationships um, that have really come out of this. And I, there isn't a place I'd rather be. I'm, you know, every part of this, the injury, it was so worth it. It really was. Through every turn, over every hurdle, Raffin has used football to help him persevere. And in a sport which requires violence and aggression, David Raffin has found peace. For Ball State Sports Link, I'm Chris Rankle.